everybody. Welcome back to the How to Podcast series. This is Dave. We are in part four of our 10-part mini-series on apple seeds. Uh, Dave, you're like, what? Uh, yeah, if you've missed the last three, you need to go back in time and check out the other episodes as we talk about our mini-series. We're calling it the Apple Seed Series on the How to Podcast series. I'm Dave. Glad you're here. Today we're going to be looking at our impact that we can have with our podcast. Impact goes beyond analytics, but goes beyond making money with your podcast. Impact can mean so much more. And today we're going to look at three things. Uh, we're, going at, we're going to look at how our, how we can have impact with our podcast by our vocal variety and pacing as a podcaster. The emotional connection, number two, the emotional connection that we have with our audience, with our guests, everyone we interact with as a podcaster. And lastly, preparation and practice. Now, I'm going to talk about a few points on all of these. And the idea is we want to have impact with our podcast. And remember, you can count the number of seeds in an apple, but you can't count the number of apples in a seed. It's the Apple Seed Series here on the How to Podcast series. Here we go. So you know what I like about being a podcaster? Is I get time with you, just you and I, which I really appreciate. And thank you for pressing play on this episode. I also love the fact that I get to interact with a lot of great podcasters in the space. Some of these podcasters are brand new. They've got less than 10 episodes. Some have been in podcasting since day one. And they bring such wealth of knowledge and experience and insight that help us as podcasters to be better at podcasting. The one thing that I struggle with as a podcast listener, when I listen to other how-to podcast type shows, is it seems like there are certain metrics that people use to determine if you're a success as a podcaster or not. You need a thousand listens in this time frame. Your audience must be this size. You must do this many episodes. You must make this much money. You, your listeners need to listen for this much of time, this length of time in each episode. Your Instagram account has to be at this level. You need to talk to, you need to post seven times a week for every episode to promote it. You have to do it within a certain period of time. You have to go live on Instagram. You have to do this. You have to have great artwork. You have to do interviews. You have to, you, there's all these rules, pseudo rules in podcasting and measurements around impact. And I would really want to challenge you to think differently about the impact of your podcast beyond a number, beyond a listen number beyond an audience size, beyond how much money you've made with your podcast. Because I think we've lost track of what podcasting was originally meant to be. In that, we're meant to reach out and speak to people and interact with people in a way that no one else can do in any other media. And I want to encourage you, if you're a podcaster and you have even one episode out there, I want you to stop and think about how exciting it is for you to be on these great platforms. Spotify, Apple, Google for now as it becomes YouTube in the future. All these different player apps, Audible. It's amazing that your voice can be on the same player apps as the big guys and the big shows and, and the amazing influencers who have millions of followers. And then there's little old us, that we're on the same platform. Where else can you do this? Really? Like, I'm a musician. If I write a song in my, in my home and record it and edit it, and can I be on the same charts as somebody with a team and with tons of money? And no. I, I, I will not be found. My music will never be found on a chart like that. If I write a, if I create a little movie or a television show or a video, will I be on Netflix tomorrow? 
Probably not. So there's not equal playing field for me as a creator and really any other medium except podcasting. I can be with all the big shows on the exact same app. You can listen to some big show and then you can come listen to the How to Podcast series. And that makes me very excited for you in that your voice has a place in podcasting. And that's why we're creating this show is I want you to know the world needs your voice. Because again, even if there's a hundred hundred different podcasts that talk about your topic, you're the only one who can do your show. Full sentence, full stop, that's it. We're all done here. Pack up the tables, set the chairs away, shut the lights off, go home. You're the only one who can do your show. I can't do your podcast. It's impossible because you see the world the way you see it. So in a world of crowded podcasting, be unique, be you. And the impact of your podcast goes far beyond any number, any stat that you can, you can raise up your hand and say, what about this? Your impact goes further than you can imagine. And there's three things I want to talk about how you can make your impact even greater when you go to create your podcast, okay? We really want engaging delivery as a podcaster. And to have engaging delivery that connects with an audience, there's three things. Number one, we need vocal variety and pacing. We're going to talk about that more in a sec. Number two, emotional connection. And number three, preparation, and practice. So let's go to number one, vocal variety and pacing. When you're, as a podcaster, when you're on the microphone and you're recording, and a lot of us, this is brand new to us. We're not, we're not like radio people. We've never been to school for this. We really haven't had a lot of on-the-mic training to do what we do. So I want to give you some advice, some things for you to think about as you record your episode to make you more realistic, more connectable, and let your audience really get to hear your true, unique voice. Okay, we need to practice our modulation. What is this? This is varying your tone, your pitch, and your volume to prevent monotony. This can be very particularly effective when emphasizing important points or creating suspense. See what I just did there? When we adjust our pacing, we can speak at a comfortable pace, ensuring that our words are clear, well articulated, and we need to avoid speaking too quickly. And I hear this a lot in podcasting where people get really excited about what they're talking about and they get really, really fast and their voice goes really quick, which can really be hard for listeners to follow. It's very difficult to do a transcription when you're not clear with your words and as you speak. Pausing is at strategic moments can also help create anticipation and emphasize key ideas. The big thing about pausing in your podcast like this is it allows your audience to catch up with what you have just said. Imagine if you're sitting in class and there's an instructor at the front of the room and they're doing a monologue, they're teaching, and you're trying to write down every single word they're saying as they say it. When I was in school, that was one of my things. I, For some reason, I could listen to the person speaking, and I could be like one sentence behind and transcribing word for word what they're saying. And my notes from class were like the notes to get your hands on if you missed a class. Where's Dave? I want his notes. Because it's like I was in the room, even though I wasn't there, because I was able to capture it all. But when I had an instructor speak really quickly with no breaks, and they kept talking and going on to the next thing, and point number three, and then point number four, and point number five, it was very difficult to keep up with as I'm trying to process, write down what they're saying in that situation. But when I had an instructor that put pauses in and let people think, asked a question, and then was silent. Do you feel that? I think 
as podcasters, we need to be okay with the silence. We need to be okay with having some variety to our voice and the pacing, the, the gallop to our voice. It just gives some variety to what we're doing. And instead of being very monotone and everything sounds the same and we never go anywhere up or down with our voice, it's all kind of in a straight line. It's kind of this. Instead, go up, go down, slow down, speed up. Add some variety to what you're doing when you speak. And what I would say is try doing it to the extreme and then kind of pull it back a little bit. So really be boisterous and excited and then just dial it back just slightly and go there. Because as a listener, that brings me in. I, you're different just by doing that. If you want to be unique in your podcast, add some vocal variety and pacing to your show. That's all it takes for some people to have a winning podcast. You don't need to go spend money to become popular in podcasting. Just use vocal variety and pacing. So your podcast is different and feels better for a listener. That's one way for you to have engaging delivery with your podcast. Okay? Number two, emotional connection. This can be connection with your listener. This can be connection with your audience, uh, your co-hosts uh, on social media. We need to be authentic. And I used this illustration many, many, many years ago. And I talked about integrity that we need integrity in life. And what I used as an example was, I'm in front of me, I'm sitting in front of like a, a repurposed kitchen table, which is my desk, because I need lots of space as a podcaster. And my, t my desk is made from solid wood. The whole desk is real wood. If you were to cut this desk in half, and please don't do that because I need it. If you were to cut it in half, there'd be a lot of sawdust. And you'd see in where you get cut, solid wood all the way through compared to some of that cheap furniture from like the seventies and eighties where it kind of looked good. But when you picked it up, there was like nothing to it. And if you ever moved and it broke, it was done. It had a veneer. It had a fake exterior and the inside was basically sawdust and glue. Do you know what I'm talking about? Those old kind of, you, you screw in the legs, right? And it had a little drawer underneath, maybe, on the on the end tables. And you're like, okay, this thing is not going to last forever because it's not real wood. It looks like wood from the outside, but if you were to cut it down the middle, you realize it's just fake. And I think we need to be have integrity. And my definition of integrity is that we're the same all the way through. We're not one thing on the outside and something different on the inside. We're the same all the way through. So if somebody meets us in public, we're the same person that we are on the microphone. We're authentic. We're the same person. And we can be, we can connect with our audience really well just by sharing our personal antidotes. I'm doing it right here. Our personal emotions, our stories related to the topic we're talking about. This authenticity creates a genuine connection with you as a listener, and it makes our message more reliable and relatable because people are identifying with us, which draws people to you, which is more engaging than just reading from a script about a topic that has zero interest to us as a podcaster. Use the power of storytelling. Craft narratives that invoke emotions and connect us with our audience based on our own experience. Engaging stories can evoke empathy and keep listeners hooked in to our content. So number one was vocal variety and pacing as a way to engage our with our podcast listener and how we deliver our message. Number two was emotional connection. And the last one, preparation and practice. Being spontaneous is valuable. Having a well-prepared script or outline ensures that you stay on track, though, and also helps you communicate your points effectively. 
kind of know where you're going with your content. If you have, for me, in front of me, as I'm recording this, I have my notes, I have my three points, and I have my bullet points under each. And from there, it's my launching point, and I'm just going to talk to you about the things that are on my screen that I wanted to share with you today. That's kind of how I'm doing this behind the scenes. The one thing you can do to ensure that your delivery is really connecting with your audience is to record and then review. Listen to your recordings to identify areas that you can improve on. Get feedback. Ask somebody in your space. I have my hand raised. I'd love to give you feedback on your podcast, on your delivery. I'll give you some ideas. Again, I only know what I know, and I don't know what I don't know. But I would love to help you. Let me know if I can be of assistance in any way, how to podcast.ca. Pay attention to your pacing, your clarity, and the emotional impact of your delivery. Take notes on what works and what needs to be refined. And like I mentioned, just seeking con constructive feedback. Share your recordings with a trusted friend, a colleague, a fellow podcaster. Again, my hand is in the air to help and ask for their honest input. Constructive criticism can provide insights you might not have even noticed on your own. And that's what I love about podcasting is that our community is very welcoming. There's great people who would love to help you with your show, that would love to help you as a podcaster to continue to grow. By implementing these tips, vocal ver to connect with your and engage with your podcast listener through your delivery by vocal variety and pacing, emotional connection, and preparation and practice. You can enhance your engaging delivery and create a more impactful podcasting experience for your audience. Remember, and there we go. I just did the little pacing right there. Remember that practice and continuous improvement. I did it again. See? Practice and continuous improvement are key to mastering these techniques over time. So when you go to hit your record your next episode, I want you to think about your vocal variety and pacing. I want you to think about your emotional connection with your audience and with your guest. And I want you to think about the time that you spend on preparation and practice as you go forward with your podcast. Remember, the impact of your podcast goes far beyond just a number in your analytics and your stats. And I'll close with this example. I just recorded an episode with, with another podcaster and I mentioned to her that I would love to connect her with one of my friends, Whitney Knox Lee from the Impostrix podcast. And she pulled up her phone on the screen and she, she said, I listened to that show and I've already reached out to her on social media and we've already made a connection. There's over, what, 4 million podcasts? Not all of them are active, but there's 4 million podcasts. And what are the odds that I bring up a podcast to a new podcaster on my screen and she already knows about it and she already is speaking to the host? You don't know the impact of your words. So when you record your episodes, think about these things and put them into practice today and let me know if they've ha helped you in any way. How to podcast.ca, there's a speak pipe little icon. Click it, record a message, tell me about your show, tell me where to find it. Hopefully you have a website and tell me if any of these things helped you in your podcast. Let me know. I'd love to hear back from you. How to podcast.ca. We're going to look at the next in the series. We're almost halfway there. Number five is coming up soon. Make sure you listen to all 10 episodes of the Appleseed series here on the How to Podcast series. Thank you for listening. Hey, it's Dave jumping on here at the end. I hope you're doing well. Thank you for listening to the How to Podcast series. Putting this out there for you. You're starting a podcast and you're like, Dave, the technology is giving me a headache. This editing thing is, I don't know, it's banana pants. I can't figure it all out. Um, and you're thinking, if there was somebody who could help me with my podcast, I would pay them to do the editing for me. Guess what? I'm actually doing that. I have clients now, past guests who've been on the show, on one of my other podcasts, on this podcast. 
I'm doing some podcast consulting. I'm doing podcast editing. I'm helping with people launching their podcast, getting it all the technology stuff, all getting your podcast and all the players, helping you with your YouTube channel, your website. Oh, it just goes on and on. It goes on and on. And I would love to help you. So instead of going to Fiverr or Upwork, I've I've been on there. I keep trying to get on for jobs and nobody's paying attention to me. And I'm, I need attention. <laughs> I would rather work with you as a listener of the show. So here's what I'm saying. Go to howtopodcast.ca, leave me a voice message, tell me what you need, and let's work out something that works for you and your budget. And if you need full service or you just need something quick like a drive through type service, I'm there for you. I got you. And if you like what you hear on any of my seven podcasts, I can do that for you. I can. And I'd love to work with you because you are amazing. And I'm there to help you, whatever you need. How to podcast.ca. Reach out. Let me know what I can do to help you with your podcast. Thank you for listening. Catch you on the next episode. Take care.